A drone built in Australia is about to do something no CCA we know of has done before. Fire a live AIM-120 AMRAAM at a real airborne target. Next month, Boeing says, its MQ-28 Ghost Bat will pull the trigger. We're taking a closer look at how this test fits into the MQ-28's evolution from prototype to operational combat asset. This is a deep dive into a development that's part technical demonstration, part strategic signaling, and one more step toward turning an experimental, uncrewed companion into an operational weapon system that other air forces might want to buy. At a media roundtable ahead of the 2025 Dubai Air Show, Steve Parker, president and CEO of Boeing Defense, Space and Security, told reporters the MQ-28 program is hitting its stride. He confirmed the program is on track for its first live-fire weapons shot next month, and that the missile will be an AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, the AMRAAM. Boeing had previously hinted the shot might come late 2025 or early 2026. Now the timing looks firm. The planned engagement will be carried out over the sprawling Woomera Range Complex in southern Australia, and Parker emphasized the test will reflect a tactically relevant scenario. Parker said during his opening remarks, This weapon shot is something we're really excited about. In addition to being a first for the MQ-28, the planned shot also looks set to be a first for any CCA-type drone, at least that we know about. It's an air-to-air -air missile, and if you were to guess it was an AMRAAM, AIM-120, you would be correct, he added later on during the roundtable when asked for more specifics. In plain language, the Ghost Bat won't just be launching a captive missile. The MQ-28 will attempt to shoot down a real airborne target with a live AMRAAM. Parker didn't offer the specifics of how the engagement will be prosecuted, how the drone will acquire, track, and hand off the target. But the test itself would be a first for this class of uncrewed collaborative combat aircraft, at least as far as public reporting goes. The MQ-28 is designed to be highly modular. Its entire no section can be swapped to host different sensors or payloads. Observers have noted at least two of the Royal Australian Air Force's Block 1 Ghost Bats sporting an infrared search and track, or IRST, sensor in the nose. IRST is relevant here because it passively detects and tracks heat sources, aircraft, missiles, and can be a powerful complement or alternative to radar, especially against stealthy targets or in contested electronic warfare environments. IRSTs don't emit signals that give away a hunter's presence and are immune to certain types of jamming. So if the MQ-28 is carrying one, that could be central to how it finds and tracks a target in this upcoming AMRAAM test. Boeing also talked about multi-ship and command and control demonstrations. Parker noted Boeing's E-7 Wedgetail Airborne Early Warning Aircraft has already controlled two live MQ-28s, with a digital virtual MQ-28 in the pattern as well, and with a target. The company announced that MQ-28 E-17 testing back in June. So the live fire shot will come on the back of a year of capability demonstrations and multi-ship activities, not as a standalone stunt, but as part of a maturing test program. The RAAF has acquired eight MQ-28s so far, all pre-production prototypes, commonly described as Block 1. Australia has also awarded Boeing a follow-on contract to deliver at least three more examples in improved Block 2 configuration. The Block 2 machines are being framed as a pathway toward an operational capability, although an in-service date for a fully operational MQ-28 force wasn't specified. Australian officials have at times floated the idea of a wider Ghost Bat family, variants significantly different from the baseline and Boeing itself has talked about potential future capabilities, even including aerial refueling in the long term. Those capabilities remain aspirational, but they show how Boeing is thinking of the MQ-28 as a platform that can evolve. Boeing clearly sees customers beyond Australia. The US Air Force has employed at least one ghost bat in past test work tied to its collaborative combat aircraft concept. Boeing was involved early in increment one of that program, but was cut in a down select last year the company could return in later increments, offering the MQ-28 or another design. Separately, in September, the U.S. Navy contracted Boeing and other companies, Andrew General Atomics, 
Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman to develop conceptual designs for carrier-based CCA-type drones. Boeing hasn't publicly detailed what they're doing under that Navy contract, but the service has signaled strong interest in the Ghost Bat in past discussions. Boeing has even pitched a carrier-capable variant to the United Kingdom before. There are also commercial and regional signals. Aviation Week reported Boeing sees an emerging market for CCA-type drones in the Middle East and reports this roundtable noted Poland as a potential buyer. Particularly paired with F-15EX fighters, Boeing has pitched the MQ-28 as a companion to the F-15EX and has actively marketed the two together. Parker emphasized the platform's flexibility, air-to-air, air-to-ground, electronic warfare payloads, radar, and the rest are all on the table. If the MQ-28 can successfully employ an AIM-120 in a tactically relevant scenario, then CCAs can move from concept demonstrators to lethal operational tools that augment crewed fighters. If a CCA can find and hand off a target or even independently guide an AMRAAM to intercept, then the US, Australia, and other operators gain an advantage in force projection and attrition management, especially in high-threat environments where attritable or expendable unmanned assets can do the high-risk work. This gives the US and allied air forces an edge against opponents that now must account for lethal networked uncrewed wingmen that can be controlled by AWACS-type platforms or by nearby fighters. If the platform also proves resilient against electronic attack, for example through passive sensors like IRST, then it complicates enemy defenses and multiplies strike options. The planned AMRAAM shot next month is an important milestone. It's not the end of the MQ-28 story, but it is the moment when a concept demonstrator steps closer to being a combat capability. For the RAAF, it's another incremental move toward an operational system. For Boeing, it's a proof point they can use when talking to potential new customers. For the wider world, a successful live fire will deepen the conversation about how CCAs will be integrated into future air fleets, who controls them, how they're launched and recovered, and how they're used tactically. Expect more demonstrations, more marketing, and more debate as the MQ-28 continues its development path.